The Red Badge of Courage, an episode of the American Civil War by Stephen Crane, Chapter 10. The tattered man stood musing. Well, he was a regular Jim Dandy for nerve, wasn't he? said he finally in a little awestruck voice. Regular Jim Dandy. He thoughtfully poked one of the docile hands with his foot. I wonder where he's got his strength from. I've never seen a man do like that before. It was a funny thing. Well, he was a regular Jim Dandy. The youth desired to stretch out his grief. He was stabbed, but his tongue lay dead in the tomb of his mouth. He threw himself again upon the ground and began to brood. The tattered man stood musing. Look here, partner, he said after a time. He regarded the corpse as he spoke. He's up and gone, ain't he? And we might as well begin to look out for old number one. This here thing is all over. He's up and gone, ain't he? And he's all right here. Nobody won't bother him. And I must say, I ain't enjoying any great health myself these days. The youth, awakened by the tattered soldier's tone, looked quickly up. He saw that he was swinging uncertainly on his legs, that his face had turned to a shade of blue. "'Good Lord!' he cried. "'You ain't going to—' "'Not you, too?' tattered man waved his hand. "'Nary die,' he said. "'All I want is some pea soup and a good bed, some pea soup,' he repeated dreamily. The youth arose from the ground. I wonder where he came from. I left him over there, he pointed, and now I find him here. And he was coming from over there, too. He indicated a new direction. They both turned toward the body as if to ask of it a question. Well, at length spoke the tattered man, there ain't no use in our staying here and trying to ask him anything. The youth nodded in assent. Rarely. They both turned to gaze for a moment at the corpse. The youth murmured something. Well, he was a Jim Danny, wasn't he? said the tattered man, as if in response. They turned their backs upon it and started away. For a time they stole softly, treading with their toes. It remained laughing there in the grass. I'm commencing to feel pretty bad, said the tattered man, suddenly breaking one of his little silences. I'm commencing to feel pretty damn bad. The youth groaned, Oh, Lord. He wondered if he was to be the tortured witness of another grim encounter. But his companion waved his hand reassuringly. Oh, I'm not going to die yet. There's too much dependent on me for me to die yet. Oh, sir, there he died. I can't. You ought to see what the children I got, and all like that. The youth, glancing at his companion, could see by the shadow of a smile that he was making some kind of fun. As they plodded on, the tattered soldier continued to talk. Sign, if I died, I wouldn't die the way that feller did. That was the funniest thing. I just flopped down, I would. I, I never seen a feller die the way that feller did. You know, Tom Jameson, he lives next door to me at home. He was a nice feller, and he is and we is always good friends. Smart, too. Smart as a steel trap. Well, when we was fighting this afternoon, all of a sudden, he began to rip up and cuss and beller at me. You shot, you blamed infernal. He swore horrible. He says to me, I put up my hand to my head, and I, when I looked at it, my fingers, I seen sure enough, I was shot. I gave a holler and began to run, but before I could get away, another one hit me in the arm, whirled me clean around. I got scared when they was all shooting behind me, and I, I run to beat all, but I touched it pretty bad. I've an idea I'd have been fighting yet if it weren't for Tom Jameson. Then he made a calm announcement. There's two of them, little ones, but they're beginning to have fun with me now. I don't believe I can walk much further. They went slowly on in silence. You look 
pretty peaked yourself, said the tattered man at last. I bet you're got a worse one than you think. You better take care of your hurt. It don't do to let such things go. It might be inside, mostly, and then plays thunder. Where is it located? But he continued to harangue without waiting for a reply. I see a feller get hit plumb in the head when my regiment was standing at ease once. Everybody yelled out to him, Hurt, John? Are you hurt much? No, says he. He looked kind of surprised, and he went on telling him how he felt. He said he didn't feel nothing. But by dad, the first thing that feller knowed, he was dead. Yes, he was dead, stone dead. So you want to watch out. You might have some queer kind of hurt yourself. Can't never tell. Where is your unlocated? The youth had been wiggling since the introduction of this topic. He now gave a cry of exasperation and made a furious motion with his hand. Oh, don't bother me, he said. He was enraged against the tattered man and could have strangled him. His companions seemed ever to play in tolerable parts. They were ever uprising the ghost of shame on the stick of their curiosity. He turned toward the tattered man as one at bay. Now, don't bother me, he repeated with desperate menace. Well, Lord knows I don't want to bother anybody, said the other. There was a little accent of despair in his voice as he replied, Lord knows I got enough of my own to tend to. The youth, who had been holding a bitter debate with himself and casting glances of hatred and contempt at the tattered man, here spoke in a hard voice. Goodbye, he said. The tattered man looked at him in gaping amazement. All right, my partner, where are you going? He asked unsteadily. The youth looking at him could see that he, too, like the other one, was beginning to act dumb and animal-like. His thoughts seemed to be floundering about in his head. Now, yeah, now, yeah. look at here, you Tom Jamison. Now, I, I won't have this. This here won't do. Where are you going? The youth pointed vaguely. Over there, he replied. Well, now, look at here now, said the tattered man, rambling in an idiot fashion. His head was hanging forward, and the words were slurred. This thing won't do now, Tom Jameson. It won't do. I know you. I know you, pig-headed devil. You want to go tromping off with a bad herd? It ain't right now, Tom Jameson. It ain't. You want to leave me here to take care of you, Tom Jameson? It ain't right. It ain't. For you to go tromping off with a bad herd, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't. In reply, the youth climbed a fence and started away. He could hear the tattered man bleeding plaintively. Once he faced about angry. What? Look here now, Tom Jameson. Now it ain't. It ain't. The youth went on. Turning at a distance, he saw the tattered man wandering about helplessly in the field. He now thought that he wished he was dead. He believed that he envied those men whose bodies lay strewn over the grass of the fields and on the fallen leaves of the forest. The simple questions of the tattered man had been knife thrust to him. They asserted a society that probes piteously at secrets until all is apparent. His late companion's chance persistence made him feel that he could not keep his crime concealed in his bosom. It was sure to be brought plain by one of those arrows which cloud the air and are constantly pricking, discovering, proclaiming those things which are willed to be forever hidden. He admitted that he could not defend himself against this agency. It was not within the power of vigilance. End of chapter 10